Hello, my name is Christina and today we are going to work through lesson three, turn that frown upside down. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to code your code cube to show different images based on which direction it is facing. To get started, you will want to make sure you have your code cube, your USB cable, and a computer with the code cube app open. When the app is open, you will go ahead and tether into your device with the USB, put your micro USB end into your code cube. It should light up to show that it is connected. Click the connect cube in the top left corner of the app and select the code cube from the list. Then click connect. In the previous lessons, we used blocks from the control and matrix menus. Today, we're gonna add in a block from the sensing menu. When you write code, there are usually different ways to get the same result. This lesson will give you two ways to write a program that makes the code cube do the same thing. Usually you want to write a code with the least amount of blocks as it will use the least amount of memory. Let's start by going into the control menu and dragging the on program start block into your workspace. Go back into the control menu and drag an if then block onto the workspace just under the on program start block. The if then block tells the code cube what to do when certain conditions are met. Now we need to let CodeCube know what the conditions will be for this if then block. In the sensing menu, click and drag the cube facing block into the if then block in the space between the two words. After it's in place, you can select the direction you want the code cube to face by clicking on the image and selecting the option you want from the drop down menu. For this if then block, we want the arrow to be pointing up. The cube facing block tells the code cube what to do when the program is running and the display is facing the direction shown in the code. Currently, our code reads as, if code cube is facing up, then blank. We need to add in what we want the code cube to display when it is facing up. This next step can be completed two different ways to get the same result. You could go into the matrix menu and use the create image block that you used in lessons one and two. The other option is to go into that same menu and use the matrix image block. This block will have the code cube display a stock image from those available in the drop down menu. Let's add that block into our if then block just under the cube facing block. The if then block should now encase that block and extend below it. The default image of the matrix image block is a colorful code cube. For this lesson, we are going to use the frowny and smiley faces. Click the drop down menu and select the frowny face for this block. The great thing about the if then block is that when you go to duplicate or copy paste it, it will do the same for all the blocks encased in it. Go ahead and duplicate this block and connect it below the first if then block. Now all you have to do is adjust the cube facing and matrix image blocks. By clicking the drop down menus, change the second instance of the cube facing block to face down and change the frowny face to a smiley face. Keep in mind that if you create your own images using the create image block, you will use more memory than you would with stock images. Your program will not execute if it exceeds 100% of the code cube's memory. You will be fine using only two create image blocks, but if you start adding in more, make sure to check the memory that is being used. Now that you've completed the code for this lesson, click send code. If your code cube is tethered to your computer, it should automatically show up. You should see the frowny face on the top, and when you flip it over, it should turn to a smiley face. In case you want to use this code again, click Save Blocks at the top of the app. Then you'll want to rename it. For this lesson, we're going to name it Lesson Number 3. Finally, you'll want to think of which location you want to save the file in. Nice job creating the code for Lesson 3. Now let's take a look at the additional activities listed at the end of the lesson plan. Remember, these activities will give students additional practice with the code they just learned in the lesson. For more CodeCube resources and to see additional videos, go to pitsco.com forward slash CodeCube.